Hello everybody, Princess Number here, and we're back at the boardwalk because it seems like anytime we come to boardwalk, we're running late. So it's we all We are, we're super late. So it's off to the flying fish. We have flying fish just opened, woo! We're here in a uh, pretty panda, so it reopened, it's time to go. Sure to fly! You heard the girl. Thank you. Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> we are so fancy up in here. I love it. It's a little magic into your day. Right? Super magical. Thank Isn't it? you? I love it. Thank you. Ooh, and it's warm. <gasps> and it's scented. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, that's so good. This is a beautiful, full-bodied Pinot Noir. It's got a nice little refreshing taste to it. I love it. I'm gonna give it four out of five Pinot Noirs. This is the one I'm gonna enjoy drinking. You're never gonna refuse a Pinot Noir of any kind. Cheers mm. to Flying Fish being open again. Mm. It's got a little bit of layers to it, but nothing like too harsh. It's not overly sweet, but not dry. No burn in the throat goes down smooth. It's definitely a dinner wine, I would say. Three and a half out of five plus. So I love the details and flying fish from the silverware and the fish shapes. Uh, silverware with the scales and the bubbles and the fish in the restaurant. I decided to order a nice cucumber collins, a nice freshened cocktail with a huge cucumber in it. I'm hoping it's like a Tom Collins with a cucumber, but we'll see. It is exactly that. A little bubbly cucumber, not heavy cucumber, not like you just bit into one, but the cucumber is definitely there. It's a nice sip and drink. Something like a low sugar cocktail. Three and a half out of five plus. We have this beautifully toasted, vegan-friendly bread with oil and balsamic vinegar. So I'm just gonna take the tiniest little princessy piece. Ooh, it's got whole pieces of garlic in it. You see that? It's either garlic or shallot, one or the other. But I'm just gonna dip, do a little bitey bite. Sourdoughy, flavored, delicious. Stylish. Four out of five breads. I like this bread. Flying fish gives good bread. So here you have bread and then butter that's almost too good to ruin. Again, more like theming scales in the butter. These touches are going to spoil us. We're not going to be able to go back to eating quick service food. I lie. There's no way in the world I'm going to pay for signature dining as often as we eat. Quick service. It smells delicious. Mm. I've never been able to decide if the purpose of table bread is to get you more hungry or fill you up so you don't eat as much. But with this bread, I don't care. Four out of five plus. I love it when you get a beautiful salad, a wedge salad, which means you gotta chop it yourself, and then they grill it. Now, the few places that we've been to at Disney where they grill a salad, it's been a little sketch, but this actually looks crisp and beautiful. So I'm just gonna try, I'm just gonna come here on the back end and just do a little like cut here with the sauce and the tomatoes. And let's see how this beautiful thing tastes all together. Mm. 
Oh wow. The freshness, the freshness is real. There's some fresh celery, fresh mint. This tastes like I just ate out of whatever garden they've got going on back here. This is incredible. This is probably one of the freshest salads I've ever had since the reopen and uh, it's grilled, it's weird. But I love it, I absolutely love it. I'm so surprised. I'm gonna give it four out of five salads. It most certainly tosses my salad. This is a family channel, man. Oops. The nice presentation of the salad, sort of like the reverse, instead of the fixing the salad on top of the lettuce, it's the grilled lettuce on top of everything else which uh, I have absolutely no complaints about. You can see all the deliciousness like hidden underneath there. Displayed beautifully on like this sort of like clamshell plate. Again, going back into the theming. There are very few restaurants to do like all in theming like Flying Fish does. But absolutely no complaints either way so far. Yeah, a little bit of everything on here. Got a little bit of sauce. Got a little bit of leaf. texture and the flavor that the grilling gives the lettuce. The bright tangy dressing help with the, like the acidity of the tomato. That's a good salad. And one of the best salads we've had all year. For four and a half out of five plus. So here we have the pork belly as recommended by our server. It's a uh, nice slow roasted uh, pork belly, they cure over the course of seven days. A little croquette to go with it. First, we're going to try the uh, pork belly, as my people would say, solo dolo on its own here. I don't even know why I use the knife because it's completely useless. Nice color to it. Nice little crust on the outside. I am excited for this. I would say this rivals the pork belly on its own that we had at Nine Dragons, or I had at Nine Dragons. Right? But let's try with some of the fixings. A little bit of the croquette. We have this green apple slaw here. Let's get a bit pork belly. Eat. We'll go back for that. We're getting a little bit of this, uh, just a delightful uh, dressing here on top as well. There we go. Mm. Pork belly elevated. <laughs> the croquette doesn't add a lot, but definitely it's a plus on the texture side, the, ap the apple salad or slaw is also a great touch. Pork belly is solid. I'm still kind of on the fence. Whether it's my favorite pork belly I've ever had, but it's up there. I would say four and a half out of five claws. Definitely coming out swinging under the sea. Darling, it's better. Down where it's wetter. Take it from me. Ma'am, still a family channel. I got this beautiful piece of crisp tofu. Now this is way smaller than the tofu steak that we've had in the past. But I'm just gonna chop it up here. Get me some sauces. Boop, boop, boop. Thank you, Chef Diana, for your beautiful contribution to Flying Fish. I appreciate you. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, the sauces are amazing. The tofu is cooked perfectly, breaded beautifully, seasoned beautifully. Nice little kick at the end. I'm here for this. Is it worth $40? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say more like $25. But it's still amazingly delicious. 
I suppose, I mean, I'm going to have to pay $40 for it, so I guess it's worth it. I will give it um, four out of five tofus. It's a little on the heavily breaded side, but still extremely delicious and um, a definitely a fine dining experience that I enjoy. We, we often argue, or not argue, we, we discuss the value of certain dishes, especially the plant-based dishes in particular restaurants, for the price that you pay. Just looking at this, $40, I would not be upset about this because what, what it does is even though this is technically just some breaded tofu and veggies, the presentation and the fine dining of the establishment that I appreciate. You took vegetables and tofu and made it fine dining. And making plant-based food something that's more mainstream and something you can go with some friends with a nice collared shirt on, I would say it's a lofty goal. You have like the sauces spread around it like a, like a squid ink, similar to what like a, a seafood dish would be. This is sort of like a medley of like what you would like see vegetation almost, they make it look like. And they sell it in that regard. So just get a little corner of the tofu here. The breading looks nice and herb. It's not just plain breading, which I appreciate. Uh, the color on the inside looks like normal tofu, but the flavor in the end is what's gonna matter here. A little bit of sauce. I'm gonna see a little veggie too. Mm. Even with the, the cauliflower in there, you can uniquely taste the breading on the tofu. It's a nice, like, herb breading. It gives it, like, a taste unlike any tofu dish that I think I've tasted for a very long time. Everything nice and crisp, beautifully displayed. For me, if you're plant-based, and I know for some of you plant-based people out there that my word holds almost no weight. For you guys, I'm gonna give this plate a five out of five claws. Now, if you're not plant-based, it is just basically tofu with a salad. I wouldn't recommend this for my non-plant-based people, but I still think this is a solid dish. So here we have one of those feats of uh, culinary engineering, I would say. So you have a potato-wrapped fish filet fried in this like sort of like potato paper. Just get a little edge here. Oh, it's nice and super flaky. They give you a nice sharp knife. I doubt you're gonna need it. But it is fine dining, so you don't make a mess of yourself. With the greens in there, both sauces. Mm. I have never been a huge fan of fried fish but that is how fried fish should be without like that heavy, greasy breading. A nice, like, it's almost like a very fancy potato chip wrapped fish. So it's like nice and crisp, like wafer thin, like thinner than Lay's thin. And a nice bite and then the flaky fish with the sauces is like a savory right. It's like two steps down from dessert. That right there is a four to five. So what I got is the seafood pearl pasta, which is scallops, lobster, mussels, uh, and a pearl pasta with like a tomato-based sauce, but they come with enhancements. One of the enhancements is a charred uh, grilled octopus. Now we've had charred grilled octopus. I've had grilled octopus a lot on this channel. It is one of my many, many, many weaknesses, uh, but that gave me a whole Ursula on a plate. I almost think there's more octopus on this plate than any of the other seafoods that were originally in this dish. And it was already decadent with the lobster, the shrimp, and the scallops. But to add this big boy here, I don't even know what to say. Now the biggest question is that when you have a, a, a dish that's a medley of seafood, where do you start? Do you start on like the low end? Do you go for like the shrimp? Do you start with the lobster? These like beautifully seared scallops? Do you do like the mussels? 
and the client, and the, I think this is, yeah, the muscles. Or do you go straight for the, the octopus? I'm going for the octopus. I'm not going to wait on this. I ordered an enhancement. I want to be enhanced. Ooh, it's a thick piece of octopus. And my mama didn't raise no sucker. But the octopus did. I char. It wriggles and writhes. I had nothing you plant papers were disgusting, but that is some delicious octopus. I don't think I've experienced that much joy in octopus. It's the very first time I had it at uh, Nomad's Lounge. Or Tiffin's. I think it was Tiffin's. That, on its own, to five out of five plus. Now for the scallop. Let's get it with some of the pearl pasta. Some of this tomato based sauce we have here. I already put that on the fork in the absolute wrong order. Let's get a tomato back here. It's good. It's really good. The pasta by itself. Tomato sauce is really interesting because it's like, we get an orange tomato sauce, but it's not like really, you don't get a whole lot of tomato flavor. It's like a hint of tomato with all these delicious seafoods in it. Um, I would say that not all the seafoods are made equal. The scalps are okay. This is the sear works. The octopus is great. Uh, there's some shrimp tail off down in here. Then we have some lobster, but let me, let me try that before I pass judgment on the dish. Let's get some lobster. Let's get a sea roach. So some of it's parts, it's very interesting. If I was you, I would work on like one kind of seafood at a time. Mixing them together is a really difficult texture sort of thing and a really hard chew. But the flavors are there. I wish the sauce had a bit stronger flavor because the octopus is light. The dish as a whole, I'll give a four. I think the pork belly was better, but this is still really good. So I decided to chase all this stuff down with a nice orange blossom pilsner. I don't drink a lot of pills, but every once in a while I get a craving for them. And I wanted a beer to wash down all this super rich seafood. It's like a hint of orange peel and super smooth. A little tinge of honey for sweetness, but not like a lot. It's a very drinkable beer. Three and a half out of five plus. Even with all the seafood that comes in this pasta, adding the uh, octopus is definitely the way to go. It was definitely the best seafood on the plate, even more than lobster. Definitely, if you're gonna order this, do yourself a favor with that extra of the octopus. Thank you, thank you. Um, we got some black coffee. Ooh, oh, that's lovely. Oh, that is a good coffee. I'm gonna put that number two to V&A. I'm gonna give that a four and a half out of five black coffees. So we have the uh, after dinner coffee cocktail with bourbon in it called the Boardwalk. How fitting. Uh, if, if you are a coffee and bourbon fiend, this is a drink for you. It has, like, normal drinks have a kick. This is like a drop kick. You're getting both heels. Four out of five plus. In a key lime world, the key lime is pink and blue. In a key lime world, it's plant-based and here for you. So we try the foods, and it's supposed to be good. 
in a big blue world. We try the dessert. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, Lord. Oh. Oh, wow, that's tart. Okay, so it's really good. The icing is amazing. I don't care about the coloration, it's tart. It's super tart, super limey, and I'm here for this. This is a five out of five limes. They should serve us at Olivia's. Like, for real, for real, I'm here for this. Because Olivia's is the old Key West resort restaurant where they serve the Florida classics, and this is a Key Lime classic, even though it doesn't look like one. It's amazing. This is a Florida staple. And I'm not a Floridian, so I can't say that, but I would like Bear to try it and agree with me, because I think he will. So dessert straight from the seafloor, complete with uh, the reflections of the waves, sort of decorations, berries and whatnot. Key lime pie is not something I would expect to find on the, on the ocean floor. I suppose it makes sense for flying fish. It's like one of those desserts, it's like, it's so pretty you don't want to mess it up. But we do food reviews, so, 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 so you gotta mess something up. I get the key lime, but it's light. It's not as strong as like a non-plant based key lime. Like it hits you, but it's like not Mike Tyson. So like So like, Mike Tyson's punch out, but you are not Mike Tyson. That's basically what I'm getting at. The flavors are good. It's a sweet, nice dessert. I don't think it's too much. It's like the, the good side of not being too rich. But I'm not getting 100% Florida key lime pie from that. But it's still good key lime dessert at that time. I give it three out of five. So, Flying Fish is back open and they came out swinging. Their They're finning. Their food was amazing. Finning? They came out finning. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Diana. Thank, Thank you, the you, whole the restaurant. Staff. The whole staff was incredible. They are definitely hitting on all tens in this restaurant. Agreed, agreed. Uh, them, it's one of the few restaurants, honestly, that has improved greatly since oh they reopened. Oh my gosh, reopened. totally. Yes. Totally. They, they are definitely doing it. It's definitely recommend mm. all the food, drinks, cocktails. Uh, if you don't have a reservation for this place, I'm going to need you to go get one now. Definitely. Go. Run. Run right now. Don't, don't tell them I sent you. Go, go, say, go. say that she sent you. Tell them Princess and the Bear sent you. Not but me. Us. Definitely would come here again. If I can get an octopus that big anywhere, I'm oh definitely coming Lord. here. That was huge. Yes. Gross me. That well, I want to know, after what you guys said tonight, would you come eat a flying fish? If so, or if not, let us know in the comments. I want to hear why you don't like good food. If there's anywhere else you'd like to, think us, you'd like to see us go, or you think a place that could beat flying fish, that's also going to be a place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this, and... We have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. And like this video. And comment. And if you don't comment, well, you know what? No fine dining for you. Forget you and all that. Fine dining or nothing. My wallet would like that, actually. You know what? Fly the fish. You heard the girl. Fly the vegan fish.